Hi, we're in the next part. This phone is just giving me issues. So the sooner we can get this message out, the better. The Lord cares for me, uh, whether or not you want to believe it. Long-suffering is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And suffering is a guarantee for Christians, for if anybody wants to live a life in Christ, they will suffer persecution. So I am not puzzled, neither perplexed at this strange occurrence. That is the outworking of my odd life. Okay. The Lord did warn me. And is it first or second Peter? I believe it's first Peter. And I'm actually going to go right there to first Peter verse 4. If I can find it, because I suck at finding stuff in these scriptures. I'm just going to make it clear that there is trouble impending. Every single human being that wreaked all this havoc in my life. And now, all these years down my life, you covered my Christianity to a point where you lack empathy for my sorrow. You lack any kind of compassion. And as a result of lacking all of that empathy and compassion, are uh, persistent that a woman should live in isolation, squalor, and abject poverty for the rest of her life because you rent yours by not loving God. You rent yours by consulting with mediums, soothsayers, me, like clairvoyance, by consulting with those who interpret spirits and random omens, by consulting with witches, witch doctors, sorcerers, magicians, and the like, astrologers. You are the ones that decided to tarnish yourself with occult activity, and now you want me dead, especially women, because I've been getting these wicked nightmares where women that put witchcraft on me all the way back in 2014 are still persistent that I should stay in this tragic condition. I understand that my family members have lost their senses. They no longer have have rational reason or thought abiding in them. They look at my videos, surveilling the living daylights out of me, just so they can pin me down and finish me off. The reason why that's even the case is because they're under a whole bunch of curses and in and of themselves they're involved in the darkness. And in so doing, are deliberately leading me like a sheep to the slaughter to my demise. They are watching me die, languish. What rational, sober human being watches a woman live like this for years on end and expects her not to commit suicide and so therefore they get away with murder without actually really murdering they get away with murder without really actually murdering they have stolen my life they have stolen literally ripped the, the, the eggs from out of my womb they have uh, chopped off my wedding finger and they've also seen it fit to make sure that no man gazes upon me with favor or no reasonable man no rational man actually pursues me for proposal i keep on getting accosted by dark men because there are forces that are making sure that no reasonable and rational man nat rational man can look at me those forces of which i am currently about to enter into a fast to conquer i am tired but i am not so tired that i can't fight anymore i'm gonna get out of this and when i do you will all understand that god has handled you and prepared a table for me in the presence of my enemies when i go through stuff I recognize it as stuff foreordained, predestinated for me by Christ, by the God of the universe to go through. These are my good works in advance that I must walk in. Do you understand? I shall not perish in this valley of darkness, this shadowy, random, dark, ominous, full of zombies, catastrophe laden ecosystem. I will not die in it, however. I will have mighty feats, having conquered many dark structures inside it, and so therefore my clout and my street cred on the other side of this is going to be far more voluminous than anything I ever had when I was 28 or 29. You literally bewitched a woman and took away a decade of her life. And she came out on the other side bigger and better than what she used to be. You elevated me. You inflated me. You literally blew steam into me that I might float in the sky like a helium balloon. You did that by persecuting me. You gave me a testimony. You made sure that Gimbo got Omanji. You made sure that I'm the girl that has great fortitude that survived attempted murder. You gave me that testimony. First Peter, verse 4. From verse from 12, if anything. Let's read from verse 3, 8, going down, and then 4 from 12. First Peter verse 4. This is why I stay strong, because I've been forewarned in advance. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love. This is 3 of 8. Finally, all of you have unity of mind, simply sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, bless, for to this you were called, that you may obtain a blessing. 
For whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him literally, this is what it is that you guys passed up. Christ made it clear to you in these scriptures that you have had under your armpits all throughout your life since you carry Bibles everywhere you go to help you understand what it is to mean, what it means to have good success, what it means to have true success in this world. He made it clear that if at all you desire to love life, in other words, to be happy, if you want to love your life and you want to be content and happy, which you currently aren't. Yes, I know. If you desire to be happy and if you desire to be content and at ease in this world, the scriptures have made it clear. They have um, counseled you as to how to do that. The scriptures of which you have been reading all throughout your lives. You have literally been reading these scriptures in Biloyen Yonk and yet you ignored them. Like it has been clear, the Bible that you subscribe to, the Word of God that you has have literally honored, or at least claimed to honor, having it been passed down from your parents and stuff, your grandparents, whoever might have been a leader in spiritual matters, you ignored all that, and you chose to consult, dabble, literally, extraneously, out of what it is that you were trained from youth, whatever your mom has done taught you, you took them and brushed them off your shoulders and chose a sangoma. You chose a, a psychic. You chose a, some sort of a medium. Clairvoyance. You chose astrologers. People who interpret omens. You chose people who belong to the dark arts. You dabbled in dark stuff when Christ made it clear that these things are an abomination to him. Do not dabble with them and over and above it if you want to love your life. In other words, be glad, Mary, and happy. If you want any of that, the power has returned. If you want to actually be happy in this world, what you gotta do, if you, whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil. Have you not reviled me and spoken all different kinds of things in a on account of uh, what uh, sorry uh, all the different kinds um against me on account of the name of jesus you literally called yourself disciples and then you bad mouthed me you decimated my career you destroyed my reputation you made sure nobody would ever look upon me with favor you even made men underestimate my value that's why i'm still freaking single at 38 you have borne false witness against me and you expect that god is going to ignore his word as to what it is that gives a good life for real? You expect it not to be morbidly depressed, needing antidepressants or some kind of intervention medically for what it is that you did. You expect it to be involved in dark arts and also decimate the futures and the lives of people in your lives that you love and still be happy? How in the world does your mind operate? Whoever desires to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him speak peace. Let him seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Meaning that you have literally made sure that God takes his eyes away from you. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer. I made that analogy using the parable of the persistent widow that the Lord inclines to the prayers of persistent saints who, who have effective fervent prayers that avail much. He hears us. But he has told us, he has warned us in advance, he has given us understanding and his, what is this in, in, impending upon these things that you will have to be long suffering. You will have to be patient. These are fruit of the Holy Spirit that I am going to give to you that you might indeed endure pa evil patiently. So for me to go through this for very many years is not the equivalent of God ignoring me. It is the equivalent of God fulfilling his promise of our long suffering. However, after suffering for a little while, God will restore us to everything lacking in nothing, which is what I'm going to get to in First Peter 4, um, um, somewhere along, I think from verse 12. But first, let's, uh, let's conclude. First Peter 3 from 8 up until the end of uh First uh, Peter 3 for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayer but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil like the scriptures have just made it clear that you don't get to dabble in witchcraft and be good what Bible are you listening to you are not building your house upon the rock you are building it on the sand for you are not putting the words of life into practice now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good that is why you envy me you cannot harm me because I am rooted in Jesus Despite my squalor, my poverty, and everything that I'm suffering from, you struggle to be content or happy or at peace with what has happened to me because you kind of recognize that nothing really has happened. I've just been preserved all this time for the glory of God. Now, who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? <clears throat> But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, 
having a good conscience so that you are so that when you are slandered those who revile your good behavior in christ may be put to shame for it is better to suffer for doing good if that should be god's will than for doing evil for christ also suffered once for sins the righteousness for the unrighteous the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but being made alive in the spirit in which um he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formerly did not obey when god's patient waited in the days of noah while the ark was being prepared in which a few that is eight persons were brought safely through the water baptism which corresponds to this now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body but as an um an appeal um to god for a good conscience through the resurrection of jesus christ who has